Well, greetings once again. What a great joy to be with you on this Thursday afternoon, Brisbane time. We have been looking at the importance and value of a productive prayer life. We have shown that many uh, believers uh, fail in their prayer life. And statistics shows us that the average prayer life of a believer is very short. And so we need to understand and we need to know how can we go deeper in our prayer life? How can we know when we're praying that we touch the almighty God? And so let me start from this point. We were born for the impossible. And so if we're not living in the impossible, we're not living in the supernatural. If we're not living in the impossible, thus we are not living in the supernatural. We are not in a relationship with God Almighty, for God Almighty is supernatural. And the Word of God tells us that He abides within us. So that means the supernatural abides within us. The gospel would be boring if Jesus only did the ordinary when he was here on this earth. Would we be talking about him today if he never did a supernatural act? Would we be talking about him today if he never moved in the supernatural realm, if he never walked on water, if he never cast demons out of people, if he never raised the dead, if he never straightened withered arms, if he never opened blind eyes, would we be talking about him today? This is why when we look at our churches and we look at our environment, this is why people don't go to church. This is why believers are falling off from going to church because church has become ordinary and no longer supernatural. You know, if we had time, and that's another night, but if we were to go and study the book of Acts, even from the beginning on the day of Pentecost, we see supernatural events. They were all drunk with the Spirit. They all spoke in languages they did not know. And, the, and, and 3,000 souls uh, gave their heart to Jesus Christ. Later on, we see that Peter went and, and raised the man at the gate beautiful who had been crippled 38 years. And then in chapter 5, uh, we see that even Peter's shadow, if anyone touched it, were healed. Are we seeing that today? If not, there's something wrong and we need to correct it. We were created. That is, we were born with a hunger for the supernatural. You've only got to watch the world and the movies they, they, they watch. They watch the movies that portray supernatural events. Now, we know that that's just all put on through the media, and none of it is real. But let me tell you, in Jesus Christ, everything is real. Every supernatural event is real. Every supernatural occurrence comes from the very throne room of God, flowing through you, out of your hands as you touch those people, and they are supernaturally healed. Our upbringing has brought us to the point that we've lost the hunger for the supernatural. We were born with a hunger for the supernatural, but our upbringing brings us to the point that we have lost that hunger. Bad teaching within the church and, and, we're, we're, and the teachings that we listen to destroy the hunger of the supernatural. The baptism of the Holy Spirit is not for today, some will teach you. Healing is not for today, some will teach you. Hurts within our soul, destroy the hunger for the supernatural. 
disappointment. You know, you've prayed and 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 yet you haven't seen an answer. And so disappointment has come in and has resulted in you losing your hunger, has resulted in you compromising your stand and your relationship with God Almighty. We owe God. Listen to me. We owe God a life of miracles. Jesus himself commanded and said, you will do greater miracles than I did. So if Jesus is, is, is imparting an anointing, he, in John chapter 20 and verse 21, it says that he breathed upon the believers uh, and they were filled with the Holy Ghost. And so if Christ filled uh, the believers with the Holy Ghost uh, and with the Holy Ghost, even as he himself was in John, uh, sorry, in Acts chapter 10 and verse 38, uh, and Jesus was anointed with the Holy Ghost uh, and with power and went about healing all. If Jesus did that, and then he imparts that upon us, if we are not seeing miracles we have a debt that we owe god we have failed in our commission we have failed in our calling we have failed to the people in our community and in our cities we also owe the people as i've just said in our communities an encounter with god you and i have had an encounter with Almighty God. You and I have had the joy of salvation, of knowing that my sins are washed in the blood, of knowing that my life is transformed through the blood and the resurrection of Almighty God. But there are people out there that do not know that. Just as when Christ walked this earth uh, and he went from town to town, multitudes gathered around him and he taught the word of God to Nicodemus. He said, you must be born again. We are all, that is you, that is me. We are all called to the supernatural, to a life of miracles you are called to a life of miracles i am called to a life of miracles we need to tap in and i know what you're saying you've tried and and why doesn't it happen that's what this session is all about today and in a few moments we're going to begin to show you how to tap into the supernatural the spirit of god that raised jesus from the dead listen lives in you. The Spirit of God that raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. He is in us. Now listen, but he wants out of us. Let me say it again. He is in us, but he wants out of us. He is in us but he wants out of us. What do I mean by that? He wants to flow out of us. He was in Peter's shadow. So people that touched his shadow were healed. When the man fell out of the window while Paul was preaching and he lay on the ground dead and Paul went down and prayed for him as Paul touched him Jesus came out of him and raised the man from the dead. When Paul took a handkerchief and prayed over the handkerchief and sent the people away, Jesus went, the power of God, the Holy Ghost went in that handkerchief and all that that handkerchief touched were healed. He is in us and he wants out of us. In 2020, let that be the slogan of your church in 2020 let that be the slogan of your life uh, write it on the wall of your church uh, write it on the, the wall of your heart jesus is in us but he wants out of us 
He wants to flow through me to bring the reality of his world into this world. Let me read that again. He wants to flow through me. He wants to flow through you to bring the reality of his world. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That's what that's talking about. He wants to flow through us to bring the reality of his world. What is the reality of his world? Well, we'll cover that, but we'll see just in case it's not tonight. So the reality of his world is perfection. The reality of his world is the supernatural. The reality of his world is no sickness, no death, no, no anger, no fear, no anxiety. He wants to flow through us to bring these things that are in the kingdom of God, that are in the heavenlies, into this present world. You know people right now that are bound by the enemy. You know people that are bound by alcohol. You know people that are bound by drugs. You know people that are bound by fear. You know people that are bound by worry. You know people that are bound by anxiety. You know people that are bound by sin. You know people that are hurting and feel rejected. You know people that are sick and crippled and blind and, and deaf. He wants to flow through you. The Holy Ghost wants to flow through you to bring the supernatural of his world into the sickness of this world. Let's open our Bibles to the Gospel of Matthew. And in Matthew chapter 5 and verse 8, Matthew chapter 5 and verse 8. The disciples came to Jesus and they said to Jesus, teach us to pray. And we're about to go into that in a moment. But let me say this. When we pray, do we pray from the heart? Or do we pray from the mind? You see, our prayer life is failing because we pray religiously. Our prayer life is failing because we pray intellectually. Our prayer life is failing because we are not praying from the heart. Your heart is where... Sorry, let me rephrase that. Your heart, that's your place. That's the place your mind can't fit. Your heart, your mind can't fit there. Your intellect can't fit there. So let's read Matthew chapter 5 and verse 8. And it says this. Well, we know this is the Beatitudes. And so verse 8 says, Blessed are the pure in heart. Blessed are the pure in heart. If you're thinking bad thoughts while you're praying, is your heart pure? If you're thinking about the daily routine that's ahead of you while you're praying, is your heart pure? If you're thinking that the requests that you're making to God that God really won't answer them, is your heart pure? Verse 8 again. Blessed are the pure in heart. Listen. For they shall see God. When you come and pray, and I'm going to open this up in about two minutes. When you come and pray, do you see God? Do you see God? Do you see God? Oh, if you pray for two minutes, I guarantee you don't. If you pray for five minutes, I guarantee you don't. Even if you pray for 10 minutes, I guarantee you don't. See, Abraham said to, to God, 
God had told Abraham, I'm going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. So Abraham said, well, if there's 50 righteous, will you save them? And then he went 40, and then he went 30, then he went 20, then he went 10. Let me tell you, if he'd gone to one, God would have saved Sodom and Gomorrah. That is, if he went the extra mile. Don't expect to sense God's presence. Don't expect to hear God's presence with a five-minute quickie prayer. It won't work. It won't work. The pure our heart becomes the greater clarity of God that we will have. If you know, if you just, for example, if you've just uh, abused some of your workmates or you've been driving home in the car and someone has cut you off and, and you've yelled out in your car, you bippity bip, 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 bip. And then you get home and you go into your Bethel and you're agitated and you, you know you've been swearing and cursing and, and you're angry. Is that pure in heart? Is that pure in heart? Blessed are the pure of heart, for they shall see God. Let's go to uh, Matthew chapter 12 for a moment. Uh, Matthew chapter 12. Stay open to Matthew 6 as we're coming back there. Matthew chapter 12 and verse 33. It says this. Either make... Either make the tree good and its fruit good, or else make the tree bad and its fruit bad. For the tree is known by its fruit. Are we known by our fruit? We can't live in this world. We can't be of this world. We can't act like this world. We can't change our church format or our church life to please this world and be good fruit are we good fruit matthew 15 and verse 10 says this and when he had called the multitude to himself he said to them hear and understand hear and understand not what goes into the mouth defiles a man but what comes out of the mouth defiles a man now let's go back to matthew to the lord's prayer matthew chapter 6 and it says this the disciples come to jesus luke tells us this and they said to jesus teach us to pray now we have the words our father in heaven hallowed be your name your kingdom come your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us in temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forevermore. Amen. Now, when the disciples came to Jesus, and said to Jesus, teach us to pray. And Jesus gave them these words. Did he mean that when we come to prayer, we just, like parrot form, repeat this prayer? There are organizations today that repeat this prayer. And when they come together, they say, Our Father which art in heaven, etc., etc., etc. Is that what Jesus was teaching the disciples i don't believe so i believe that what jesus did here is he laid seven keys or seven principles on how we are to pray and i'm going to open those keys and principles up to you us in the rest of this session which is nearly over and in the session again next week now i'm going to do it in showing you how I pray. You see, I pray this prayer every day. I say, our Father in heaven. And I stop at that point. 
and then I begin to live it. You see, when you pray, when you get up and you go to your Bethel, you go to that private place, no one's around, no mobile phones, no computers, no TV, nothing, just you and God. And if that's not your environment, you won't hear from God. When you cut yourself off from this world and you go to your Bethel to pray, when you finish praying, when you begin to pray, when you're in the middle of your prayer time, do you sense God? Do you hear from God? Do you leave at the end of that prayer time with a, an assignment from God? If not, you're praying a religious prayer. If not, you're praying from your mind and not your heart. You see, our prayer time must be from the heart, from the spirit. For Jesus himself said, those who worship me must worship me in spirit and in truth. So where are we coming from? So let me explain from my own prayer life. When I come to prayer, I pray like this, our Father. And I stop right there. You see, when I pray the Lord's Prayer each day, it takes me anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour and a half to pray this prayer. Our Father. What is Father? You see, the first key that we're seeing here is family. I belong to a family. I belong to the heavenly family. I'm a son, and you may be a daughter of God Almighty. I'm a prince. You may be a princess of God Almighty. That gives me special access. That gives me special resources. That gives me an insight that no one else can have. Our Father, I say this, our Daddy, my Daddy, and I begin to talk to him. Oh, Daddy. This is how I start praying. I love you, Daddy. You know, you never fail me, Daddy. Every day. You know, if you're 70, let me show you this. Show you how precious Daddy is to you. Statistics have shown us that if you have lived 70 years, I'm not far away from that. If you have lived 70 years, you have, you have lived at least 750 million miracles. Wow. What do I mean? If you have lived 70 years on this earth, you have breathed 750 breaths. Each breath is a miracle. So we've got a lot to love God about. If breath stop right now, if I stop breathing on this screen as you are watching me right now, you would begin to look with puzzlement. You would begin to see my face turn red. You would begin to realize something was wrong <coughs> because I'm no longer breathing. And within a short time, life that is known would leave me. We have so much to thank God for. I said, Daddy, I love you. Daddy, thank you. Thank you, Daddy. Thank you for being my father. Thank you for picking me up out of the miry clay. Thank you, Lord, Father, when I failed yesterday. You picked me up. You know, there's a little story that was told, and it's not true, but it is true. The story was the story of the footprints, but it's a little added to that. And the story goes like this. There were two sets of footprints and God is talking to this man. And so this man looks and he, and he turns around and he says to God, he said, God, I understand the two sets of footprints because that's you and I walking together as father and son. Father, I understand that. And I thank you for that. I thank you that in that valley you were walking with me. I thank you on that mountaintop when everything was beautiful and, and the blessings were being poured out that you were walking with me. 
And then the man said to God, and he said, God, I understand the one set of footprints because that was in the desert when things were going hard in my life. That was when I had to cross the deepest sea and I, and fear was starting to grip me and anxiety was taking hold of me. That was when the enemy was coming against me and, and I was bound up with walls all around me like Israel when Egypt come after them. And I understand that's when you were carrying me. And that's why there were only one set of footprints. But daddy, this third set of footprints, I don't understand. There are many of them and they don't seem to be going anywhere. They're facing this way. They're facing that way. They're facing front. They're facing back. Daddy, what are the footprints? The last set of footprints. And God looked at the man and said, son, that was your victory. And that's when you and I were dancing together. You see, when we come to daddy and we say, daddy, thank you that you walk with me. You know, the greatest moment in the life of God at creation is found in chapter three of Genesis when it said God came in the evening time to walk in the garden to fellowship with Adam. God hungers to fellowship with you. God hungers. You know, I, I can feel God's presence even right now as we're talking about this. You see, if you come with this kind of attitude in prayer, if you come with this kind of reaching out to God, you will begin to feel the presence of God even before you take another step. So there's no way that you can come and pray if you pray like this and get up at your end of your prayer time and walk away and say, I didn't feel anything. Prayer was dry. It's like my prayers are going and they're hitting the walls and they're bouncing back. No, 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 it can't happen. It can't happen if you approach your daddy like this. God wants to fellowship with you. God wants to love you. You know, I, I continue and I say, God, daddy, daddy, I need to be held in your hands. You know, we don't, our grandchildren live down south and they're starting to grow up. But, you know, even at nearly 17 years of age, my granddaughter still loves it when I hold it in my hands. And we need to be held by God. We need to be loved. And some of the most precious moments that I experience is when daddy comes and takes me in his hands and holds me holds me, holds me, holds me. Wow. You can't have a prayer time and walk away dry if this is how you approach God. If this is the relationship you have with God. Listen to this. Who is your daddy? He's the first and the last. He's the beginning and the end. He's the creator and the keeper of creation. This is the one who loves you. This is the one who came down from heaven to walk in the garden with Adam and Eve. This is the one who comes into your prayer chamber, who walk with you, to fellowship with you, to love you, to, 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 to just hold you. He always was. Who is daddy? He always was. And he always is. Who is daddy? He was bruised, but brought healing. He's your healer. When you hold, when he's holding you in your arms, healing is flowing from him to you. Healing is flowing from him to you. He was pierced, but removed all of our pain. He was persecuted, but brought freedom to you and I. He was dead, but brought life again to you and I. He was raised from the dead so that his power could flow through you and I. 
When we fall, he's there to pick us up. Who is your daddy? When you fail, he reaches out in love, forgiving you and forgetting all the wrong that you have done. When you're weak, he is your strength. When you're lost, he is your way. Psalms 105 verse 119 is a light. He is your light. He's your lamp. He leads you through the paths that would try to destroy you. When you're afraid, he becomes your courage. When you're hurting, he holds you in your arms and brings healing through your body. When you're broken, he puts you back together. This is why it's important that we come and sit and allow daddy to hold us, to hold us. When you're broken, he puts you back together. When you're hungry, he comes and feeds you. When the enemy attacks, he's your shield to protect you. When, you're, when you lose face, he will provide for you. He is your God, and that is who you belong to. He is your life. He is your love. He is your source. He is your power. He is your daddy. He is your goodness. He is your faithfulness. He is holy and righteous, thus making you holy and righteous. He is eternal. He is unchanging. Who is your daddy? You see, we spent 10 minutes on teaching our father just two words. And our time now has gone. Our Father in heaven, hallow be your name. The second one, which we'll pick up next week, is worship. Is worship. Let me say this. The Greek word for worship means to kiss. Do you remember the first kiss you had with your wife or your husband? Do you remember your first kiss and the shivers that went up and down your back and you felt like you were melting? When you kiss, almighty God, that is how you feel. When you go into his presence. So I go in when I pray, my daddy. I go into the throne room. I sit before him. I begin to share the love and thankfulness of having a daddy that will never fail. Then I begin to flow into the worship and thanking him. And what I'm doing is I'm kissing his feet like Mary did when she poured ointment over him. I'm kissing his feet. I'm kissing his legs. I'm kissing him all over. How can you not touch God? How can your life not be transformed in a prayer like that? We need to make sure that our prayer life is not from the mind, but from the heart. We need to make sure our prayer life is not intellectual, but it's from the spirit, spirit to spirit. And then we will get up knowing we have been in the presence of God. Then we will get up knowing that God has spoken to us then we will get out with our commission, our assignment for the day that is ahead of us. Let us pray. Oh, Father, Daddy, Daddy. Oh, you created everything, Daddy. You're our creator. You said in Psalms 139 that you made us uniquely. There's not two the same. We are all different, Almighty God, because you have made us. Father, help us when we come to prayer before you to come with an open heart, not an intellectual mind. Father, help us to understand that we have access as your sons and your daughters to the very throne room of God. Amen. Well, this is Prophet Tom 
I love this session today. Oh, I love speaking about God and sharing the wonders uh, of God. And what a joy it is to share with you today. Thanks for connecting in. If you've enjoyed this session today, let your friends know about it. Tell them to click on and watch this on Facebook. Uh, it'll be posted on my site uh, and they'll be able to go and watch it. I'll repeat it a number of times. Uh, they need to hear, but not just this session, but the session before this and the other two or three before that, but in particular, these last two sessions. Well, again, thanks for connecting in. God bless you. And we'll talk again next week.